Okay, so today we're going to be going over how to actually game on Kubuntu. I was looking back at some of my older videos and I realized I never created a video like this. I have a bunch of gameplay of gaming on Linux Kubuntu, but I never made a video explaining exactly how you need to do it. So I'll go through that process here and I'll go step by step. So it's going to be a little bit different for me because I'm going to be showing you on a Windows virtual machine, but the process is still identical. So here we have our, you know, our typical Windows machine. So what you need to do, you're going to need to download two things. First, the Kubuntu ISO file and the Rufus tool, which is going to allow you to create a bootable flash drive. So we'll search here for... the Kubuntu ISO file and I'll I'll post a link to both of these websites in the description for both the Kubuntu ISO file and the Rufus tool. So we'll go here download Kubuntu. Okay and the version I like to use you can probably try this newest one Kubuntu 22.04 long-term support, but the one I'm running is actually 20.0, uh, this one down here. it You may get slightly different gaming results from the games I've been playing if you use the newest one. Just to keep everything the same, I'm going to go ahead and download this one again. It's probably going to take it a while, so I'll go ahead, I'll pause the video here, and we'll pick it back up whenever the download is finished. Okay, so as you can see, our Kubuntu ISO file finished downloading. So the second thing we're going to need is the Rufus ISO tool. So we're going to go ahead here and search for Rufus ISO tool. And the link I usually use is this first one here, the Rufus.ie. So we're going to click there, scroll down a little bit. And it's actually really good to use this screen here. Whoop. This screen here as a guide. I won't be able to show you guys the exact, you know, going through all these options step by step since I'm using this inside a Windows virtual machine. But you're going to make sure it looks pretty much just like this. I'll, I'll still open up the tool just to show you. But, uh,. Yeah, I'll, I'll open up the tool first, and then we'll we'll go from there. So we'll go ahead, download this, and we'll head to our downloads folder. So here's the Kubuntu ISO file, and here's Rufus. So we're gonna double click on that and run it. So as you can see, since I'm running the virtual machine, it's not gonna recognize my USB device but you're going to leave it on disk or ISO image, you're going to select the Kubuntu ISO file you just downloaded, and you're going to make everything else look like this right here. So partition scheme is going to be MBR, target system, BIOS or UEFI, volume label, you can call it whatever you want, file system, FAT32, and cluster size should all be the same. The only difference is instead of Kubuntu or Ubuntu, it might might say Kubuntu. So that should take care of that. Once you have that done, your USB drive is going to be ready for boot. So what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to restart your machine. If you're running a newer on a newer computer, you may have to disable in the BIOS. It's called Secure Boot. Otherwise, it's not going to pick up the USB drive as bootable. So you may have to disable that if you're having trouble booting from the USB drive. But I'll go ahead, I'll pause it here. I'm going to have to finagle a way to get you guys to view the Kubuntu ISO file because I'll have to boot it off of a separate virtual machine. So I'll pause it here and we'll pick it back up. Okay, so if you are successfully able to boot off your USB drive, you should see something that looks like this. It should come up and do a little disk check really quick and it should see the Kubuntu logo pop up. So once it finishes booting up here, I'll show you how to configure the installation. It's going to be a slightly different because I'm doing this on a virtual machine, not a physical host, but it should be pretty much the same. So 
Okay, so here's the options it's going to give you. You can either try out Kubuntu, which weird enough, if you know if you're worried about compatibility with hardware, you can always do that. I already know it's going to work with my hardware, so I just go with install Kubuntu. Okay, so after we hit install, I'm sorry about the view. It's going to be kind of goofy here since I'm on a virtual machine. Kubuntu sometimes gives you a fit like this, but if you install it on a host machine like you guys will be doing, it should work perfectly fine. So here you're going to pick your keyboard layout, hit continue. It's going to ask you what type of installation you want. Normally I just use the regular normal installation. I uncheck download updates while installing Kubuntu because sometimes it can get a little bit hairy. It's usually better if you just do the plain install, then once you boot it back up, it's going to have you install probably half a gig or a gig gigabyte of downloads. It's usually the better way to do it. You can download them while updating, but sometimes it, it messes up. So we're going to uncheck that, and I usually check this install third-party software. So that's done. We're going to click continue. And it's going to take us to setting up our disk partition. What you can actually do if you don't want to fully commit to Linux, it should automatically, if you have a Windows partition already on your hard drive, what, what this tool is going to do, it's going to automatically assign uh, a percentage of your hard drive to Linux and it's going to keep the Windows partition, which is probably a good way to do it. If you don't want to fully dedicate yourself, you can go ahead and do that. That way you have the best of both worlds. You can still run your you know, your Windows system if you want, or you can run Linux. What you'll have to do though, when you're booting up just like you chose the USB to boot up from this, you'll have to manually switch every time. If you want to boot up Windows, you'll have to go into your BIOS and select the Windows boot disk. And if you want Linux, you'll have to you know, select the select the Windows or the uh, Linux partition. So it, it depends what you want. I usually go full bore and just because I know Linux works on my hardware, so I just go ahead and wipe the whole thing and change it all to one Linux partition. Unfortunately, I can't click install now. You guys will do that to finish the installation, but I tried this before and it completely crashed my system. I guess I can't handle installing Kubuntu while it's running natively on a host Kubuntu and also screen recording. It, it just couldn't handle it. So this is where I'll stop it. I will pick it back up though. I'll show you guys my host machine and how you get Steam installed. It's pretty simple, so we'll pick it back up after that. Okay, so if you did everything right, what it's going to do, it's going to have you restart and then pull the boot medium. So you're going to go ahead and do that, and it's going to bring you to your regular host desktop like we're seeing here. So all you have to do now to start gaming, usually what I do is I come over here, go to Discover Software Center, and it gives you a bunch of options here, but if you just want to get started right away, you can just type in Steam to search for it and hit Enter. There's two ways to do this. You can do it this way, which is might be easier. Here's the Steam installer here. All you have to do is click install. I'm not going to click it because I already have it installed on my system. But the other way you can do it is go to the uh, go to the command line here, which is the they call it console in Ubuntu or Kubuntu. So you're going to just type in here Steam. Now once you hit enter, it's going to prompt you, it's going to say, did you mean to install Steam? And then it'll give you the command to, to type in and hit enter. It should say something like sudo apt-get install Steam or something like that. And then you're going to hit enter and then hit yes when it prompts you. It'll go through and install Steam for you. So after you do that, it should be pretty much self-explanatory. Steam's going to be installed on your system. So you're going to go over here, since I already have it installed Steam. You're just going to click that, open it up, and you should be good to go. It's going to function just like it would on a Windows machine. It's going to prompt you for a username and password. You're going to put that in, and it's going to work exactly the same as it does on Windows. So you can put in your credit card information, you can buy games, download games. It's going to work identical. 
At first, I, I would recommend probably staying away from the Proton compatibility tool until you're ready. I would stick with just games that run natively on Linux for now. If you want to eventually get into the Proton tool, it's not that hard to install. All you have to do is go to the settings. There's tons of videos on there on how to do that. And I may do one in the future, but I want to focus this one just on getting people started with gaming in Kubuntu. So that should be about it. Thanks for watching.